Hey everyone, welcome in to a, another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm getting an update from Graphene Manufacturing Group traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol GMG. I am chatting again with Craig Nickel, founder and CEO. Now it has been a little while since I last had Craig on and I do appreciate all of you sending me your questions. We're going to get to uh, as many of those as we can, but we do also need to more or less go around the horn here to talk about the three different product types within GMG and get a general update here on the recent news. Craig, I want to start off with the Thermal XR division because back on October 30th, the company announced a commercialization update on Thermal XR and also some forward orders for about $400,000 Australian. Now, this all ties into a lot of questions that I've gotten in terms of revenue, estimates, projections, whatever you can give us in terms of Thermal XR sales. Take us through what Thermal XR is now in terms of this commercialization move, please. Yeah, hi, Corey. Great to be back on. Uh, look, we're very happy to, to talk through the Thermal XR progress. We did release uh, data late last year around orders on Thermal XR, and we got an order book of around uh, 400,000, and that is spread across a range of countries, uh, different distributors, including America. Uh, and some of that's conditional upon the approval of the in-country nanomaterial approval for our coding. So we're working through that. And of course, as soon as, you know, the biggest note is uh, the notable one there is America's EPA uh, approval for our Thermal XR. And of course, once that gets up, sorry, we'll, we'll definitely be uh, communicating once it gets up pretty shortly. So there are other uh, distributors that we're working through, not just America, but that is it's definitely um, a large part of that. Now, what can we expect in terms of this in-country approval? This is a big step for the company, especially if you want to realize sales. Is there anything more you can do or is it simply in the government's hands? Yeah, so we've been um, providing them with, with the information to get to a decision with them in short order. It, it's a well-known trodden path where GMG is a, is a member of the Graphene Council, which is an American-based graphene industry association. And they've also provided some information on how this has progressed. We have a number of consultants, global, local, as well as in America, who's helped. Plus also New Calgon has supported us to apply the actually the importer for this particular product uh, at this stage. So all of that came together about five parties to, to move this into an EPA approval uh, review. And, and that's what we're waiting for. And in the end, it is the EPA's approval um, that we need. Uh, it is literally like um, working through any country approval. It's, it's up to them. Uh, but we've certainly put our best foot forward, fully noting it's a, you know, we believe it's um, already been approved by a number of countries, including Australia, which has very similar type of approval processes to America. And, and obviously, um, it's quite a safe product, given we've been using it for some time now. Um, so, yeah, we, we're pretty confident. And, you know, we're aiming, I think, um, to, to be able to have that up and, and running by the end of this month if we take into account their latest request, which we put out press release not too long ago, saying they wanted an extra 30 days. So that'll bring us up to about mid, mid-January. mid So by the end of the month, we should definitely know, um, and we'll, we'll be making note of that in the press. Okay, so that approval then would unlock this $400,000 Australian and forward orders are those ready to be delivered? And even on the back of that, what potential do you have for follow-up orders, other organizations, other people that might be waiting for this approval to happen? Yeah, and that's just the initial um, order. And it's actually not probably even the first full order. Um, so that, that product is ready to go, uh, ready to be shipped. We'll probably air freight it because of the delay. Um, and the cost for the air freight is not going to be too much more uh, than, than sea freight to get it into America. Uh, and then that that's a process that will enable us to unlock a very large market, obviously being the American aftermarket uh, use of air, air conditioning coating there in the HVAC market. So very keen to, to make that progress and, and then work with New Calgon to, to basically work with them to distribute it throughout their 37 different areas that they've got throughout North, um, North America. 
So it sounds like when you get this approval, if you get this approval, I should say, then there could be some more sales coming. But as of right now, you do need to fill those initial orders. When it comes to producing the graphene for these orders, that ties into a December 19th news release where you have commissioned a modular graphene production plant. Take us through the importance of having this production plant simply because I have gotten a lot of questions asking how the company can produce enough graphene to satisfy future orders for thermal XR, the lubricants, and also batteries. Yeah, it's a massive milestone. So for six years now, we've been making graphene at one site uh, where we've been, we scaled the technology and we had a number of production systems running. Now what we've done is we've taken that and put that into a scalable modular design. And we've now brought that into a plant that has the ability to say put another 20 times modules in there and we've just switched that that initial module on now that's a big step forward we've now been able to transfer six years of operating learnings uh, fully automated production plant into what is we believe you know the cutting edge technology for our natural gas to graphene and hydrogen plant and that will enable us to be able to produce enough graphene for the year that we have, including stock that we have for the sales that we expect and then the business plan we have. So that's all good. That is obviously then enabling us to switch on other units as and when we need this year as well. And that's really important because we, we need a scalable production system, as we do, uh, to switch on new production as we as we build the sales. And I think that's, that's the thing that... Um, that we built this business around and now we can see it coming to action. So we're very, very excited about it. It's a massive milestone for us. This is completely GMG technology to self-develop from the very initial start of the company all the way through now to a modular graphene production plant, which is, you know, I just went and saw it this morning uh, and it's it's definitely fully integrated all into electronic dashboards throughout our building to see how production is going with from what we've seen, great quality control as well so far. So all of that together, very exciting. It means that, you know, once we put a few more um, production units in, which we can do at very low expense, to say we can put this plant anywhere in the world, wherever there's gas, and then we produce hydrogen byproduct. So there's, the space for this is is massive. The market for this is massive. And, um, you know, it's, it's great proof of, of all of GMG's work to get to here. Okay, so that was going to be another question is, would you expand this or build another plant in another country? It sounds like you would, but what would drive that decision? Yeah, I think we're customer led. You know, so we'll, we'll be focused on potential joint venture partners, uh, customers and opportunities with our battery, especially, as well as the cost of natural gas, which is a big factor in how this this plant's costs um, for products goes um, continues to to be calculated. So, cost of labour is obviously quite high when you have one person managing one unit. But this modular plant is designed to be able to, to have many operating units with one person operating them, which will produce a much lower cost for labour. And then the cost of gas, obviously electricity, is obviously then the next cost. And we've got uh, some good costs here in Australia, but there are a lot lower costs around the world in Middle East and, and North America, particularly North America, which which is very attractive. Uh, so that's where this type of facility could be built and, and put in at very low cost of materials, which is then enabling us to see much greater you know, opportunity for especially for the battery, which is going to be very much a volume driven type low cost um, product that we need to get out there. So is there a market simply to sell the graphene end product or is this simply just tied around where you might develop or further produce thermal XR or batteries? Look, there's an opportunity there to help with graphite supply shortages, wherever they might be. They haven't really manifested yet, but there, there is some potential uh, graphite supply shortages that, that could come about through certain things that... Um, that certain governments have done, specifically China has recently 
ban the export of graphite. And our graphene has the ability to replace graphite in, in batteries. Uh, but it's not as simple as swapping one without the other. There's technology that needs to be worked on with the battery. But that's definitely an opportunity that we could help with. It's not a specific target market, but we certainly have had requests, a couple of different battery companies asking us to help there, to give them what uh, effectively would be a full graphene coating that they paint on, um, like we use for ours. But but generally, this plan is being designed to build to make graphene for um, for our products, and that's what we're mainly making it for. The ability to use our graphene is one that we found is quite needs quite a lot of skill and experience. Our graphene is very fluffy and very light and we know how to use it and we know how to make it into coatings and, and we know how to make it into very thick coatings or very thin coatings. Um, we know how to make it into lubricants or into batteries but it's taken years for us to develop that. So really you know this, this graphene plant is being built for internal use and that's that's definitely our strategy. Our core strategy is to make graphene for our own products and then look to make and sell those products. Okay, let's now talk about the battery division here. The most recent news we have dates back to the middle of November when Rio Tinto and GMG released a uh, video celebrating the partnership here. Look, I'll post a link to the company's news section so everyone can watch over that video, but please give us an update on how this relationship with Rio Tinto is advancing and an update on the pouch pack because that is critical to this. Yeah, so the progress with uh, battery is being quite good and I think um, Rio Tinto has been quite happy with from where I, where we've seen it that on our progress and we are, we've made a 500 milliamp hour battery announcement and the next stage is for us to announce 1,000 milliamp hours and that's the next stage we need to announce, um, and that's what we're planning on doing shortly. The next stage for Rio Tinto is obviously to go into some kind of battery pack because they can't really use a cell, and the battery pack's got to be done in a way which can be used uh, as a proof of concept for them. And that's what we're lining up with with Rio Tinto as we um, as we work through this its early year. Uh, so all of that seems to be progressing quite well, coming together. We're developing a completely new battery with graphene and aluminium and you know all said and being done um, it's gone really quite well we're at 500 million power it's a good sell get to a thousand million power make that clear make that announcement and then progress to the next stage so yeah it's uh, you know I think the opportunity there for Rio Tinto is obviously with our battery but then what we'd like to do and of course with other our products for a graphene lubricant as well as that thermal XR and, and for other companies like Rio Tinto is to support them to help with those products also reduce their emissions as well. And that's something we continue to work with um, Rio Tinto on uh, as per part of our previous documented agreement we have with them. So it's a very important relationship for GMG and it is, we believe, quite a, a, a fortuitous overlap of needs where we're really, uh, GMG provides, I think, some opportunity to reduce uh, Rio Tinto's emissions going forward once we apply successfully the technology that GMG has. But also, obviously, Rio Tinto would love to see, being one of the largest aluminium producers in the world, would love to see an aluminium ion battery out there and actually be able to use batteries uh, in their own vehicles, operations, that is from the aluminium, from which have, have all the benefits of aluminium ion batteries, such as... Um, low or no risk to fire and and longer life and higher charge rate and all those things. So there's a really synergistic type relationship. And I think all of those things are still there. And, and I believe it's um, progressing quite well. So Craig, you mentioned you're at 500 milliamp hour here. You want to go to a thousand. What about growth past a thousand? Any general timeline that investors could expect? So typically, once you get to a thousand, it's it's kind of seen as okay. You've got a commercial scale sell. It, it's a number that you could argue that's two thousand. You could argue it's five hundred. We've said it's a thousand, so we've, we're using a thousand, and it's just a number that you can point you point to to say that you can have a sizable uh, sell, um, and you can control all the materials and you can control the reaction in hundreds of cycles, if not thousands of cycles. So, really, once you've hit a thousand. 
the chance to go beyond a thousand is all there, and that's all good. It's just it becomes part of a product. So we might, you know, I, I would suggest the product that we produce in cell wise for Rio is going to be many, you know, probably tens of thousands of milliamp hours. It's just this is the exact product we're trying to design and show proof concept for the scale. And once we've got that, then we'll go off into an actual product. Once we get to a thousand milliamp hours, we're really going into, well, we need to build a automatic battery production plant and that's our next phase. And so what we're trying to do by the end of this year, have a fully operated battery plant, at least under construction, maybe fully finished, but probably not uh, under construction. So when all within one roof here in Brisbane, uh, we'll have the gas to graphene on one side and then the graphene to battery on the other side of the roof, on the other side of the building. You know, that is like no other company in the world to make, you know, all with local ingredients, all of the supply chain of the key materials being basically all under one roof. Now, to get there, we've still got to do some things. We've got to work through into a 1,000 million powers. Then we've got to build the battery plant, which we're getting a lot of help from a number of companies right now. We're pulling all that together. But that's really the next stage. Right? So once we get to a 1,000 million powers, we'll likely not come out and say, oh, we've now made 2,000 or we've made 16,000. We'll likely come out and say, we're now taking an investment in a battery plant that has the ability to make this many megawatt hours. Um, it needs to be operational in this time. And then we'll be targeting a certain type of product that we can make that could be tested by a number of big companies around the world, as well as obviously we had Tinto and satisfying the contract under that. So that's that's really the next stage. So that 1,000 million powers is the test to be able to go into um, automated production. Okay. Before I get you out of here, then, can you just summarize what sort of news investors should be looking out for that truly moves the needle, not just for batteries, but any of the other divisions as well, please? There's basically four things that we're focusing on this year. Getting the lubricants, G lubricants data, engine testing fuel data out to show how much fuel we save with our graphene. That should be coming out shortly. Getting a battery 1,000 milliamp hour announcement out and then we were looking at more TXR sales. There's a number of distributed discuss discussions going on around the world and end user agreements going on around the world. And that we believe um, will definitely move the needle. And then the fourth thing is eventually pushing into battery production um, with the number of um, graphene production units being on, on top of that um, so that it all comes together. So that's, that's the plan. That's the big plan for this year. Uh, a lot of consolidation of where we got from last year, massive year last year for the company really focusing on pushing through into final stage commercialization on the battery in G-Loop and pushing into bigger sales for, for Thermal XR. Huge year for us. And, you know, I think by the end of the year, we should be a really, you know, in my view, uh, quite a well-functioning commercial operation right across our three products. All right, Craig, thank you very much for this update. Again, please, everybody, send me your questions. Keep on sending me your questions because I will get Craig back on more consistently at the start of this year to follow up on news and get your questions answered. So, Craig, again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you have a great rest of your week. I'm sure we'll be chatting again soon. Thanks, Corey.